Do you like fancy stuff like this? I'm gonna teach you how to make it and hopefully give you some information so you can make your own. Okay, so to make the animation I'm gonna use DaVinci Resolve, which is by far the best free video editor out there. You can download it at the Blackmagic Design website. Uh, you can get the free version or you can get the paid version if you want. But you don't need the paid version for most use cases and certainly not for what we're doing today. To create the animations we're gonna use the Fusion page. Uh, it can be a bit intimidating if you've never looked at it but you don't have to be overwhelmed. The, the way it works is you have input nodes, you have nodes that do something to those inputs and you have an output node that sends whatever we do to the edit page. This node structure can be very simple or very complicated, but the basic principles are always the same. I won't go into it too much because this is not a, a video about Fusion itself. Let me know in the comments if you want a video about like Fusion 101 or something similar. Uh, if there's enough interest, I may do something about it. Okay, so to start, we're gonna right click on the media pool and create a new Fusion composition. Call it whatever you want. Let's call it test. Uh, set the frame rate to whatever you want. I'm gonna use 30 and set the duration um, to whatever you want to. If you watch the video until the end, I'll give you a bonus tip on how to allow the composition to be stretched or shrinked without messing up the animation so make sure to stick around just hit create and we have the test composition now so let's just double click it and this will take us to the dreaded fusion page so here's the fusion page so there's the media pool right here as we've seen on the the edit page you can show it or hide it if you click there. Here is the node tree where all the nodes will live. We got the spline here. I'm gonna close this for now. I'll show you later what to do with it. And right here we have the viewers. Uh, the viewers is where we can um, output any of the nodes. I'll show you in a bit how it works. And right here is the inspector. If you don't see it, just click the inspector thingy right there and it will show you the inspector like on the edit page is where you change all the settings on the nodes okay so let's start by moving this slightly out of the way the first node i like to add to fusion compositions is a background node because that will set the proper resolution let's connect it to media out and there is the node but now let's make it transparent let's go to the inspector on the right side and lower the alpha okay so now we have to decide what we want on the on the widget. So uh, I'm going to try to replicate the one you saw at the beginning. So let's start with the circle. And the way we do shapes on Resolve, there's, there's a few ways to do it, but the most common is actually using a background. So let's choose the color we want the circle to be. Let's choose red. And now use, use a mask, the blue square, on the thingy means it's a mask. Again, maybe I should make a Fusion 101 video. Uh, maybe later. Let me know if you guys want it. Okay, so let's make the, the circle with the ellipse tool. Let's make the border width a bit thicker. Okay, let's preview this one there. There's the ellipse. <clears throat> let's make it not solid. Oh, that border is way too thick. We also want it smaller, so let's go 0.2 and 0.2. That border is way too thick. It's still too big. Okay, you can actually adjust the size by selecting this white mark right here. It's probably easier to do that. So let's pull it this way. <clears throat> I'm not sure what the original one looked like, but yeah, let's make something. Okay, so now we got the red circle. Let's make another circle. I'll actually copy this and paste and load this one on the viewer. Make the background white and make it slightly larger. And now let's merge these two ellipses. Uh, there's a few ways you can do that. 
the easiest one is just grab one background and merge it with the other. And it creates a merge node. So if you if we load the merge node now, we have the both the circles right there. Uh, so it's still a bit big. So let's shrink the border size actually on the red one <clears throat> and on the white one. Okay. So this seems about right. So now let's create a third copy of the circle and it's gonna be our uh, white circle, the, the one with the white background. We're gonna merge again and load this merge, make this ellipse solid and smaller. There we go. This works. <clears throat> okay, so this is kind of similar to what we did before. Um, it's not going to look exa exactly the same, but don't worry about it. Let's merge everything to the to the main composition. So we have the circles. Now the next one was a rectangle, right? So let's copy another white background. We could rename everything. If you want to rename the nodes, just uh, select it and press F2 and change the name. So now we're going to use a square as the mask. Oh, uh, by the way, the rectangle automatically connects to the back background if you have the background selected when you click the rectangle tool. So yeah, let's shape this rectangle to be like this. Oh. That's not what I want to do. You can move this. Oh, by the way, you can move stuff either by dragging the arrows right here, or you can do it right here on the center, uh, on the center param parameter. Okay. So yeah, let's put it right there, and let's merge it to this one and load this one on viewer one. So now we need to mask it, and to mask it, I'm gonna use this ellipse no the bigger one this one let's copy it <clears throat> paste it there make it solid and make it bigger okay and now to use it as a subtract mask from the whole thing let's connect it to the mask on this merge and it should mask the foreground there it is so if we load this one, there it is, it's cut off. So one thing I forgot to do is round the, rec uh, the corners of the rectangle that you should do right here. Okay. So there it is. I'll probably make the square actually bigger and make the corner radius all the way to being round. There we go. This is pretty much it, isn't it? Okay, now that the shapes are done, let's add the text. And to do that, we just drag this one, uh, this node. It's a text node. It's a technically a text plus node. But let's go with subscribe. Uh, choose whatever font you like. I tend to use Futura. Uh, this one, extra black. And let's merge, actually let's preview this node right there. Uh, let's make it black. Let's make it, actually let's merge it. To see where it sits, okay. So let's pull it up, pull it back. And you can adjust all settings like any other text thingy you can adjust the size you can adjust the tracking you can adjust everything you can even adjust all the shading elements let's go with um drop shadow i think drop shadow is three yeah number three enable let's go with the drop shadow S subtle drop shadow 
Let's have another text uh, right here. Merge it. Make it black. Okay. Make it Futura, but a smaller one. Yeah, this one works. Let's place it right there. Make it a bit smaller. Let's give it a drop shadow. Now that we have all the shapes and all the text, let's add the YouTube logo. There's a few ways to do that. The most obvious is adding a PNG or a JPEG file, but that requires those images to be loaded in the media pool anytime you want to edit, make a new version of the widget. So my recommendation is import an SVG logo and it will get embedded on the composition. To do that, let's go to the Fusion menu, import SVG, and I've got a YouTube logo right here. Let's import it. Size, okay, that works. And if you notice, uh, Fusion added a group right here. And this is all, all the shapes. So they are kind of built in resolve with backgrounds and masks and whatnot. So if we merge this one right here, there's our logo, okay? So now let's make it smaller. Let's line it up. Let's make it a bit smaller. There we go. This works. You can also add any other logo you want. I'm gonna use Twitch logo just to show you. There we go. There's the Twitch logo right here. And if you merge this one instead, just change the text twitch.tv slash joa games go subscribe to that thank you well not subscribe just follow i don't want your money okay now that we have all the elements in the circles the square the text and the logo let's go to the fun part which is animating stuff and the way animation works is with keyframes every time on the inspector you see this diamond thing this means the, each setting with a diamond can be animated. So let's start with the big circle, the white one. So the way it works is you keyframe the position of the circle at frame zero and you keyframe the end of the animation. So for the circle, if you've seen the main animation, it kind of draws like this. So this is the length setting on the circle so let's animate the the circle from the frame zero because i want it to start animating immediately and i want that animation to last about a second so let's go to frame 30 because we are doing 30 frames per second on the timeline and set a keyframe there actually it's full at frame 30 and it's zero at frame one or zero in this case so this is what it looks like it starts with nothing and fills in and when it gets to frame 30 it's full so there's a dot right there so to get rid of that we need to change the ending of the line there we go and perfect okay now for the second circle we're gonna start at the same time uh, this is the second circle yeah there we go so at frame zero, I want it to be zero. And at frame 30, I want it to be full. Let's change the ending. But for this one, I want a keyframe. Oh, actually I forgot to add a keyframe. <clears throat> so at frame zero, I want it to be nothing. And at frame 30, I want it to be one. See how the diamond turns red when there's an animation? Okay, so if you remember, they were not synced. And that's because on the other version, I also animated the position of one of them. 
So let's add keyframes and in the position and start at zero and end at one. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, see? Now it kind of follows that position. The length and the position follow each other, so it kind of spins in a different way. Yeah, it looks nicer. Now to animate the rectangle, uh, let's add a second instance of the rectangle. <clears throat> it works as a second mask and we're gonna choose, instead of merge, let's use multiply. And now at frame. Okay, so the circles animate at 30. So let's keyframe the position of the second one right here. <clears throat> And let's set it to be right here. And then for another second, it's gonna go animate in. And it's gonna be right here. There we go. I should have keyframed before I moved it, but it works all the same. So now it's gonna animate, it finishes the circles, animates in, and now all the shapes are animated. So now let's work with the text. So for the text animation, I want something quite simple. I want the text to appear that it's being written on, like a typewriter, so there's a setting for that which is, if you go to the inspector, it's the right on, uh, see? How it just animates letter by letter. Okay, so let's do that. So our animation ends at frame 60, so we're gonna start keyframing this one at zero right on, and for another second at frame 90, it goes to one. So there it goes. And when this one ends, let's keyframe the other. Frame 90, keyframe, zero, another second. This doesn't have to be a second, by the way. So now the only thing that's missing is the white circle, the full one, and the logo animation. So when do we want that to animate? I'll say it animates right here at the same time as this thing, the rectangle. So let's go to frame 30 and keyframe the thing where, which one is it? Is it this one? I think it's this one. No, this is the big one. Yeah, this is the one. Okay, so at frame 30, I want to keyframe the... Mm, let's make it fade. Maybe, so let's actually keyframe the merge. Let's go to the blend right here, see? Boink. Let's set this to zero. And let's go half a second on this one. Blend one, and there we go. Takes half a second for it to pop in. And the YouTube logo, I think I want it to zoom in. So let's set a transform node right here and keyframe the size at frame, I think I'm gonna go 45 when the background goes full blast. <clears throat> I wanna keyframe the size, set it to zero. Let's go another half second at frame 60 and set the size to one. You can manually type on the text boxes, by the way. So this zooms in, this fades in, this zooms in, the other animation ends, text starts going. And okay, this this animation is a bit short, so I'm not gonna bother with, a, with an alt animation. You can just fade it out when you add it to the timeline. Now that we animated the whole thing, let's play it back and see how it goes. So the first thing you notice is the animation just comes to a stop very abruptly. 
um, it's very linear. So to fix that, let's go to another page that we haven't looked at before, which is the spline. Okay, on the spline you have all the nodes that have animations, so let's select everything. Actually, let's select everything except for the text because we don't need to smooth the text animation because I wanted that one to be linear. But what we're gonna do is click this fit all button because for some reason it's not the resolves default. Let's select all the keyframes and press F for flatten. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna curve all those all, all those lines and make the animations accelerate and decelerate in a different rate. You can then of course manually adjust the curves. I'm not gonna do it because I want stuff to actually match. But let's see how it runs now. You see how it slows down after a bit? Yeah, I think it looks much better. You can make the curves more uh, more flat if you want, or more curved, so it accelerates or decelerates at the rate that you want, but all in all, this works for me. We can close the spline now. Okay, so now we have the whole widget, uh, the whole widget made. Everything's here. What do we do with it now? So let's go back to the media page. Now that we're back in the edit page, uh, we can just use the composition we just made this one you can just drag it here really so here it is but this is, this is not exactly what we want so let's find some footage this one should do it just some stock footage i grabbed now we're gonna drag the widget over the footage and let's see how it plays it's stuttering a bit but that's what video editors do Okay, so this is way too big, right? Let's grab the transform controls. Let's make it smaller. Let's move it down here. And there we go. So we have our footage stuttering like mad. We have our animation coming. And there we go. Now we can add some um, sound effects to it let's put it right there yeah this kind of works you can line it up properly or something but yeah this is the basics of it If you like this type of content, make sure to let me know by subscribing to the channel and leaving something in the comments or something, so I know it's worth doing this kind of stuff because it's a bit different uh, from what I've been doing. I won't be showing uh, CTA now because I've been doing it the whole video, so make sure to subscribe, like, activate the notifications and have fun, bye!